Hello everyone, welcome to the second episode of Draw with Dorian. This is all still a big experiment and today I'm in a sculpting kind of mood. I was working on this a little bit yesterday. It's Chavant clay, which is an oil-based clay, which is great because it doesn't dry out. Looks like this. And I work it with these tools that look a bit like dentist tools, but they're not, they're sculpting tools. There's also something called monster clay, which is very similar in terms of consistency. And it comes in different colors. So it's really nice. Actually, the other one I started over a year ago, probably this one. And I can just come back and keep fiddling with it and refining it. But I will not work traditionally. I will work in ZBrush today a bit. And actually, I will be totally open to wherever intuition pulls me. So it's an exploration of design, uh, kind of like brainstorming, but with shapes or with forms. So I will put something on the digital canvas in this case, and then see where that pulls me. And I might go to Photoshop or I might go to Blender and jump around. For you, as you're watching and following along, if you have some sculpting material, go for it, sculpt and start with a abstract shape and see what comes out of it. If you don't, just draw and draw with, like focus on shapes and just drawing a shape and seeing what comes out, what you can see in that shape and play with it. You can also draw what I'm sculpting or something that's inspired by that. It's all up to you. So no guarantees that anything useful or attractive will come out of this but I'm just going to explore. So somehow my scene switching got broken here. I updated my streaming software. So this will hurt for a moment while I switch to ZBrush. There we go. I like to start with DynaMesh and a lower resolution is nice, maybe 64. So we just have a ball here. I'm using my Wacom tablet you can do this with a mouse, but <laughs> it's pretty painful. So here we can sculpt, adding things or removing things. Some of you will be familiar with ZBrush, others not. It's a fantastic tool for ideation, especially. And Blender has something similar now that's getting more and more powerful every week but I'm much more comfortable in Blender, so, sorry, in ZBrush, so I'll play here. Uh, I'll go more, well, let's see. I wanted to go humanoid, like make a human face, but maybe that's too literal. So let me just make a mess, find a way to make something unexpected. Snake hook brush is always good. Crazy things happen. So I have no idea what this is going to be. It might become a face or it might become a creature. And I'll just look at it from different sides and keep making shapes that feel interesting. Like now it's too symmetrical top to bottom. So I'll make the bottom more narrow. I start seeing that there's this spiky thing going on one small spike and then here a bigger spike but it's a similar shape so here this could be the biggest one let's make it also a similar shape looks like a mantis head something like that or i guess these would be the eyes of the mantis but let's keep going turning it around here looks like a dinosaur triceratops something like this 
not good with my dinosaur nomenclature. So I'm looking for design for shapes, looking for things that don't feel balanced or interesting. Like this is maybe too much of a square over here, so I'll change that. Now this starts looking like a big nose. And maybe what I should do is make a few designs, like a few rough block-ins, and then choose one and develop it further. I think that could be fun. So this feels like a head, like an alien head, which I guess that is the standard thing to come out of this kind of exploration, <laughs> is alien head. Add some eyes. It looks like a strange Donald Duck alien with a split beak. I'm not such a fan of that, so let's go another direction. Let's make a creature instead of a head, because I think all of these things will look like heads for me right now. So we can turn this thing. If this was a creature, we would need some legs. Like clip curve, it's a nice way to cut things off in a clean way. It's getting creaturey. Maybe we can make a tail. Shape-wise, I feel like all of this top is getting too big. There's too much going on. So maybe we can cut off some of these things. And the power of seabrush, which is something you cannot do in traditional sculpture, is to stretch now all of this. Wait. Oh, huh, interesting. Okay. I cannot do that with my head sculpture <laughs> but this we can completely deform at this point and also add gesture maybe to it now it feels more like a crab
Okay. <laughs> Very strange creature. I'll put it up here in the corner so we can keep him there. And let's start with something new. Big shape. Also nice to work with the silhouette. So I'm just looking at the overall shape. Maybe we can add something like this. Uh -huh. I turned off symmetry. It's quite nice to have symmetry on for doing designs like this. So, different shape, but let's try this again with the pointy. I think as soon as you have two circles, you just get eyes instantly. But let's see if we can turn this into something else. By making eyes again up here, for example. So maybe... <laughs> I wanted to make it a nose down there, but I guess now it looks more like inverted nipples or something like that. Can we turn these things into nostrils? Haha. So now we have a gigantic nose, and then up here, there's the face. Design-wise, I like the round curviness that's repeating everywhere. I don't like that proportional relationship. It's a bit too extreme. So if you're drawing shapes and creatures, try rotating the page, for example. I can do that here by rotating this whole thing upside down. And now let's see what we have. Ooh, now this looks like a mask, like eyes up here and the nose is now here. I think that could work. So when your brain thinks it sees something, mess it up, turn it into something else. He reminds me a little bit of Sid, the sloth from Ice Age. <laughs> So 
So I guess I should try to go away from that. Look for something that is unexpected, unknown. So I find an original idea. But I'm definitely going towards face right now. Can I use these things down here for something that can work in my design? Well, I guess it can become beard, a strange beard design. But yes, I think I want to make some big distortions to this to make it less like Sid. We can change, this is also really fun in ZBrush or Digital Sculpture, you can change the expression really quickly. So now it's kind of, there's some surprise. If we pull these eyebrows down, now there's distrust or anger or something like that. Can break symmetry. There, we have some unhappy person, character, that's our second design. I guess there is space for three there, let's see. Mm, I'm always starting with a sphere, so we could start with something else. Go a bit more towards the unexpected. I do need Dynamesh though. I quite like the radial symmetry feature in ZBrush as well. Okay, so what is this? It could be a helmet, it could be a building, here still looks like a helmet, now what happens if we turn it upside down? Now it could almost be a chair. flower so this is what I'm what I mean when I let the shape guide me I look at it from different angles and s let my brain wander see what it could be and then whatever is attractive or interesting I, I pursue and I pull the chairness out of this design I've never modeled a chair <laughs> it's a little bit intimidating but maybe let's go with that let's see I might have to add more sub-tools, which could be a problem. Well, let's go. With this, we can also play with the insert mesh brushes. Now 
No, I really don't like this. But let's see what we can do with it. If this was painting, the, the idea of these prefabricated elements, if we were in Photoshop, it could be shapes you have in Photoshop or reference images. you're dragging in. This is called kit bashing. When you create a design by putting different elements together like this. So we have also a design play right now between this organic shape that looks flowery of the chair itself and then these hard surface mechanical elements. I think we really need to solve the bottom here. Maybe we can try radial symmetry. There we go. Look at that, isn't that crazy? <laughs> it's so wild. Psychedelic. I have no idea what's going to happen, but this is part of the fun. This is the exploration. And this is how you can up come up with creative solutions to things. If I had a brief, I could be working like this as well in concept art. But even you can start designing a chair and it ends up being a car <laughs> or a creature. This would be a nice animation also for the chair to lift and lower, something like this. Um, I would like to go down, yes, like so. Okay, I like that more than the pointy end that we had before. But yeah, it's pretty strange. And right now we can't uh, subdivide. Let me check the stream. Okay, looks good. If I do re-Dynamesh, I'm not even in Dynamesh, okay. Hmm. And now it's like a cooking pot. I like the distortion that happened on the pistons at the bottom there. If I go back and forward, see that little stylis stylization? But we're kind of losing the chairness, which maybe wasn't there <laughs> sufficiently in the beginning. Nope. Okay, let's turn off radial symmetry. Well, I guess that could be a design. I'm not really happy with any of these, so I'm going to do one more. And let me ch check the chat if there are any 
questions or suggestions or comments? Not yet. Subtool append sphere. Oh, look. <laughs> now there's a sphere sitting in the chair. Okay, that could work. See, this is, I'm open to any happy accidents. So this is kind of cool. This is interesting. So let's go, let's continue with that. Um, we could move that in a bit. So I'm, I'm distorting the sphere, but I should do it with symmetry. So it feels like it's sitting there. So I'm tempted now to make some kind of character or creature that is using this chair. And maybe its arms could feed into these pipes. like David and God, no, Adam and God, almost touching. <laughs> D, ding, ding. <laughs> so I made a hole where the head goes on purpose because I wanted to make a head. So I did the opposite, which is another great thing to do. Just if you have an impulse, do the opposite and see what happens. So now, I want to add eyes. That would be the straightforward thing to do. Somehow, somewhere in there to add two eyes. And the mouth. That's pretty creepy. Uh, but let's not add eyes. Let's try to do something else. Design-wise, there's this mirroring happening at the moment. The chair slash pot is going down and the creature is going up so maybe we can use that pot shape hmm maybe we can actually use the pot itself as a helmet or something that's another great thing to do when you're working digitally to reuse assets or elements so we can duplicate this it will duplicate it with all the other stuff okay um, let's see if we go, nope. There. So I'll have to get rid of some things. <laughs> but it's so cool, it's so fun. So this gives me some ideas like for example the pipes are now covering the arms so this looks like armor now so there could be some armor covering those arms and this looks like those feathers that some of the old helmets have so that can work also we will have to distort things to not just repeat it one to one I'm not such a fan of the fish hook thingies that are there. I don't know what they exactly are. So actually, let's get rid of them. If I can, I may not be able to. Oops. Uh, 
been a while. Delete hidden. Okay. Yeah, we'll need something there, but I think now it's a bit too much. This could be its own <laughs> character as well. So if we take a screenshot of this and bring it back to Photoshop. This whole thing looks like a face now. Mustache. <laughs> Some teapot man. Just endless possibilities. Hello, camera. Okay. Hmm. So ZBrush kind of crashed, which will mean I have to get rid of my other designs. That's too bad. But let's take a screenshot of all of this. Maybe. Oh, I see. Whenever I take a screenshot, I guess Photoshop or uh, ZBrush crashes here. So let's do this. there. He looks angry. I would like him to be more happy. That would mean turning the shapes of these hook things. And I was just thinking about going to Blender and shading, putting some, some nice shading on this to see what happens if we do that. I also want to be mindful of the time, not to make this too long. <laughs> Sorry, there you are, 40 minutes in. And I guess I should also keep the tempo up a bit so there's things happening for you since you're watching. Uh, where's my creature here? Move these arms up and in a bit. Maybe 
Maybe we can give this a nose as well. So it looks more like a being. There's some funkiness in the back here, some overlap. So let's bring this up. in and since this is just a concept or an idea the geometry doesn't have to be clean the smooth brush can be nice to get some cleaner curves Chair's a bit too thick for my taste. So we could do inflate, but set to inverse, something like that. Okay, let me try to change the expression with the eyes there. Maybe we can make the helmet thing a bit smaller as well. So it's not so symmetrical to the bottom. But we're still echoing the shape language. I guess that is a sh strange shape for eyes, so maybe we can get rid of it. <laughs> he looks pretty happy now. Some ideas are coming out of his brain. Now the question is, should we add something like eyes or not? Also perspective has been off, which is nice to control distortions. So it's just a straight orthographic view. And to work on the silhouette, which right now is not so nice in the back, it's very straight. And maybe in the front, if this is his belly, that could come out a bit more. Mm. his belly and his mouth at the same time. That would be his butt, so I just made the butt bigger. Now it's not balanced, there's too much weight on the right, so let's see if we can bring it out on the front. Okay, this is very strange. And I don't know if I like it. Not really. But it's unusual. It's surprising. It's not something I could have kind of rationally thought my way towards. Now, I'm curious what this looks like with some proper lighting. So I'll bring it to Blender. And I'll save two versions. One where I delete all the other things. 
<laughs> here's our other man face creature so we could this is on endless we can play now with all these elements that we have and you know combine them maybe that's actually the face that's inside underneath the mask whatever I will delete all of these so they're not going into blender <laughs> hey maybe that works better it's still a kind of chair <laughs> I like that I like that better than the other one yeah you know let's let's try to make this work I think that's much better than this this is too symmetrical so we are free to do wherever our intuition pulls us there's some problem solving I have to do in here damage control this doesn't make any sense there uh, let's go to local Uh -huh. my UI is too small where would this be in the menu solo that's what I was looking for okay so we can clean up some of these things by smoothing See, now we're looking at the back of this creature. The eyes are on the other side, but it doesn't matter. Anything can change purpose. Looks like Dynamesh is off again. So now I'm back to shape design and see what I like in terms of composition and shapes. I feel like this middle thing is too wide, so I'll make it a bit narrower, maybe even pointy. It might start looking a bit phallic, which is not my intention. Hmm. Yes, it cannot be that pointy or it will be misunderstood. And actually we should figure out what is part of what. If he's still in a seat, then we need a bit more volume here. Do you remember this, the evil guy, character from the Turtles? <laughs> I forget the name. He has some element of that guy. Okay, back here. It's a bit confusing, but I'm not going to worry about it. Let's export this. Save again. As ZBrush and then export an OBJ. This might not work out. Uh, I don't have much experience bringing ZBrush things to Blender, but let's try. And we can, if it works, we can have some fun lighting this. Desktop. Aha, uh -huh. so it just brought the one sub-tool, but that should mean we can go to the other sub-tools and do each one individually. Uh, export. I think 
that was the body. No, that was the helmet. Mm. Oh, well, almost perfect. Okay, so far so good, looking promising. And then the body. It's actually nice that these are separate objects. And maybe we can make some asymmetry, asymmetry here with snake hook. To give a bit of storytelling or action. To this character. Yeah. Okay. Oops. So here we are. Let's add a floor. Probably the legs are not really perfectly touching the floor. Yeah. Oh well. How are we doing on time? About 10, 15 minutes left, I think. So let's give the body a color. I want to go with skin color, like an orange fleshy thing, but maybe since this is not really human looking, we can go with something less expected. Then this would be more metallic. You know, I think it's going to get, take too long if these are all different materials. Hmm. Because it's not going to work quite right. So a good way to choose color I found is to go analogous or complementary. Analogous means if you have one color, choose a color that's next to it, like neighbor colors. So I have this pink purple. I'm going now towards more blue or I could go towards more greenish, but subtle shifts. So there's a unity in the color palette. And this could be more shiny to make it look more wet. And so, yeah, this should be actually several materials. Hmm. <laughs> it's looking pretty cool, pretty weird. Let's do something, let's add glowing eyes. That's always good. I find Blender more useful to have a scene, to arrange different things, to work with different objects. Uh, was it Control Shift D? Well, I can do this for now.
Okay, we're using Eevee as a render engine, which is decent, but not totally realistic. So I'm going to make the background a bit darker and then switch to Cycles. And maybe we can make this light more interesting or scary. So I'm adding a second light. Maybe let's switch to this view. There are two lights now. The red one is much weaker. It's underneath. And I'm adding a blue one just for some variety. And this is so silly, <laughs> but it's fun. And let's go back to rendered view. And let's increase the depth of field add depth of field and increase the focal length focal length first that means how much of a wide angle lens is this let's go to maybe 20 oh, sorry let's switch to the camera actually so if this is a moment in a movie the top view is actually not too bad it's like we're looking down on from a building. I'll increase the floor. And maybe there can be a blue light from within all this antenna stuff that's on the head. Let me get another window here. This is also super cool in Blender. You can have your workspace totally flexible to whatever you want. So let's copy this light and put it right inside of this head mess. This decoration there. And change the color so it's a little bit different. Wow. <laughs> If you're wondering what this has to do with drawing and art, the point here is to play, explore. Let's do a render and see how that looks. I will check the chat in the meantime. Would you consider Blender harder than ZBrush? No, more the opposite. ZBrush is more complex and nice to see you, Diego. Um, well, Blender can do a lot more things. You can make a whole film. If you go to the Blender website, you'll see projects that have been done, like complete animated movies done in Blender, which you can't really do in, in a ZBrush. But ZBrush is quite hard to know, hard to learn, as you know. So if I didn't know either right now and I was getting into digital sculpture, I would probably start with Blender. It's it's getting pretty good. How do you have the little sketch in the side? <laughs> Andre, hey, how's it going? If you have a model like this, oof, it's getting very slow now because it's rendering and I'm streaming. But whatever you have on your viewport, 
wherever you drag it, if you press Shift S, it will create a snapshot. Ay. <laughs> Major lag. So I hope you can see the view on the left. I'm still scaling. Ugh. <laughs> so this is the active view, the bigger one now. And I can sculpt on this. I can switch to different subtools and keep sculpting. And the one on the right has been stamped to the canvas in a sense. And it's a 2.5 dimensions screenshot. So it still has depth, but I can't sculpt on it anymore. It's just kind of saved there. And then Command N or Control N will make a new, like a clean canvas. Let's look at the render. Hey, it's kind of cool. Uh, I'm playing with the idea, with the thought of bringing this to Photoshop to kind of finish the project or the presentation, if this was a, an actual thing. But I wonder if they will take too long. But I think it could be useful. So if I was doing this for real, I would find a, a better camera angle. I would probably add more a more wide angle lens so it looks more epic. But if I do that, I'll have to render again, which will take too long. So image safe. Yep. Nope. Hmm. Oh, there you go. Oh, am I still in the chat? Yes. Uh, <laughs> thank you. Sorry. My bad. Let me finish setting this up for a second. I'm so sorry. I need to set up these things better so I can see what's actually being streamed while I'm streaming. So I'm saving the image. Just a second. Okay, so back to ZBrush. You see the image on the left. If I want to stamp a screenshot, so to say, on the canvas, shift S and I move it, shift S and I move it, shift S and I keep going like this, but I can't remove these things once they're there. So the one, see there's this weird col colliding happening now. If I want to get rid of that, I have to press control N and it all goes away. So, but it's okay doesn't take that long to create new screenshots. So Blender gave me this, which if we go back to Photoshop, <laughs> I like this one too. He's not too bad. And open. So this is my Blender render. And I could make this a PNG with a transparent background, which would have been ideal. But, well, sometimes things are not ideal. So if this was an image actually I was working with and I had to show an art director or something like that, I would get rid of that sharp edge in the background. And I would separate this whole thing from the background a bit more. I don't want it to be cropped also. So I'm adding more space on the bottom. Let's see if content aware fill can fill this in for me. It will make the legs too long, I assume, but we can cut them off. I got to this by shift backspace, by the way, the fill options and content aware is in there. So that's pretty good, but I want to cut my legs. 
so I, we can see the whole character. We can even do this with J, maybe. Nope. <laughs> Okay, I'm back here, I can't really see what's going on, but we can use a lasso tool. And because we're now in Photoshop, we can make the design a bit better with small tweaks. See what happens if I do a level adjustment. The helmet is too much similar to the background, so I want to find a way to separate it. Maybe actually darkening it could work, darkening the background. So I'm using the magic wand tool right now. It's going to be tricky at the top. where we have all this craziness happening. So if you're rendering to a transparent PNG from Blender, that would be quite nice because the selection is already made. Now I have to go manual, which is quite time consuming. Yeah, it's not working out that well. Maybe lasso. So I want some places here where we can see through. So I'm going with the lasso, selecting some of these spaces. If you can see, whatever is red. This is the quick mask mode, by the way. And so now, inverting the mask, I protected the creature. And now we could technically paint the background darker, go a new layer, that's usually a good idea, and see if painting the background darker helps us to make the creature stand out more. I can't do it on the back because then that disappears again, but I can do it in the front. Looks like we masked our eye. <laughs> so. I don't want black there. Quite the opposite. I would like some bloom there, which we can add on a separate layer to show that these eyes are really glowing. Hmm. <laughs> I don't know, let's go back. Yeah, it's a tough one. What if we make it lighter? Yeah, it's, I think our base wasn't working that well. I was rushing to get to Photoshop. It's tricky to make this head separate from the background. We could use a rim light that's also a solution that often does the job. So this is just a lasso selection and then filled in with white on a separate layer so we can tone it down. I think that helps quite a lot. So what else? I will do two or three more things to kind of wrap it up and make it look a bit more proper. I feel like this is the mouth and it should feel more organic. So I'll paint in some wrinkles, maybe also some specular 
reflection and you can be quite rough with these things this is a, a rough concept let's see showing the metalness of the armor here getting a bit more contrast into it And then the legs also feel too smooth. So maybe we can add some noise. This might be a good moment to look up actually reference for crab legs or something like that. Maybe it's the contour as well. That can be more irregular. these highlights for sure and that's going to be very useful to break this up changing the contour and changing the highlights is kind of a similar similar effect it communicates form change So from this very smooth digital look to go to something a bit more organic. This leg stayed a bit too wide in the sculpture. And we can cheat. So the back silhouette here is completely lost. We can cheat some cool rim light. It's getting a little better, I feel like. I'm not such a big fan of this thing, this part. It's getting a lot of attention. And this is also feeling too smooth still. So these two areas are my biggest problem areas at the moment. I would like to add some more fireworks up here, maybe some particle effects. Let's see if we have a particle brush. Ah, uh, yeah, <laughs> now he's becoming magic. Don't overdo it, just a bit. I was wondering if we can have particles come out of the mouth. So I'm masking the upper part of the mouth and I'm going to add a glow uh, layer effect to this effects outer glow make sure the color matches more or less kind of a greenish high saturation I like to go to 100% so I can see what is there and then I can turn it down from there. Make it too strong and then take back what is too much. So I can erase on a layer mask, for example. This might totally not work. I think it's not working, <laughs> but it was worth a try. Yeah, maybe not. It also right now looks like his leg is shooting some kind of laser, which could be cool if that's a if that's the story we're telling, but then we need to make it more narrow. It's a weird angle, compositionally. But 
this is turning rapidly into <laughs> some kind of war scenario but compositionally I would say a good direction for a laser beam would be something like this and I'm implying that there's another hand back there and we can add glow to this layer as well and I think I should wrap up because I'm going and going outer glow where are you here maybe yellow okay it's feeling more like a laser duplicate this whole image actually let's flatten everything fix the composition cropping and let's add a layer blur motion blur or camera blur filter blur gallery yes I think that's the one This makes things a lot more cinematic and interesting and I guess I should or I wanted to add a, a motion blur so let's do that first filter blur motion blur so this is a, a moment that was captured in the action motion blur is like when you're taking a picture you see the elements that were moving so I have a separate layer for this with the blur make a layer mask and erase out the things that you want to be in focus that were moving with the camera or that you just want to be in focus for compositional purposes It adds a lot more atmosphere and drama. And we're going to add some sparks or things flying through the background and foreground. Filter, blur, motion blur. Maybe that's enough <laughs> okay <laughs> I have no idea what this is but it's a story moment you know let's go to black and it's a composition and it's original it's something that I couldn't have come up with if I had planned it it yeah kind of when it works as a whole image whole composition Ooh. That was an accident, but that kind of works. Here's the blender scene, which we could do a lot more with to actually make this look better. And here's the ZBrush file. And I guess here we have our original cast here the first ideas so i hope this was entertaining <laughs> and useful gives you some ideas of how to work how to combine these different tools together 
and maybe inspiring. And that's it for today. I went over a little bit, but yeah, I hope you enjoyed it. I'll see you next Monday for more adventures like this. Give me some feedback. I would really appreciate it. If you are part of the shading course, you can write on the Discord server. If not, Facebook, Instagram, let me know how this is for you. If you have ideas for what I can do, I'm more than open to hearing those. Um, yeah. Mondays, I'll do this. Wednesdays, I'm giving feedback and answering questions about the shading course. And Saturdays is coaching for the shading course. Stay safe, everyone. Take care. Good to see you guys.